We are here, we are ready, and we are good to go. Whew. All right, let's do this. Hey guys, what is up, and welcome to my channel. I am Crystal O, and this is my lovely husband, Ola Inca. What's up, y'all? Hola Inca. Anyways, so today we're going to be talking about what we wish we knew before we got married. So, if you follow me on my channel, you know that I did a video about five things or three things I wish I knew before I got married or just something of that sort of, you know, language. But today we're going to be doing one with a little spin-off of both of us kind of bringing our own views and perspectives into it. And also this is now, you know, a year and a half later. Like we are almost embarking on two years of marriage. So we are in a completely different space. Um, and we just want to share honestly and authentically with you all. As always, I'm always trying to push out honest and authentic content. So I love that you guys rock with that. And today we are ready to bring it, right? Yep. So what's one thing you wish you knew before you got married that you know now but did not know before you got married like it actually hit you like slapped you in the face and dawned on you like when we got married you're like dang i know this i wish i would have known to leave my expectations at the door mm -hmm. of marriage like i really wish i would have known that man these unrealistic expectations uh, will crush your partner, will crush your spouse, mm -hmm. if you don't really analyze and even heck, communicate those expectations um, and then come together with a compromise of what's real, realistic and what's not. Yeah. And I think one thing I found uh, pretty early in marriage was that I had these expectations of what I uh, wanted Crystal to do or what I thought she should be doing. Um, and she wasn't doing those things. And I think it left me with a lot of internal frustrations mm -hmm. that maybe I didn't want to communicate out to her that I was frustrated, but I was frustrated. Mm -hmm. And even some things that I didn't even know I was frustrated about, because I didn't even know they were expectations mm -hmm. already inside of me. Yeah. So I think like, uh, one thing I wish I knew before marriage was like, coming with the expectations I knew I had, um, and then also coming with the expectations I didn't even realize that I had mm -hmm. and really analyzing those and bringing those to Crystal or maybe an unbiased mm -hmm. third party who, who believes and loves us yeah. and analyzing are these realistic or not because mm -hmm. I feel like I just came in with these expectations and I don't know if you would say the same yeah. um, but just these expectations that just mm -hmm. were not realistic right. and, and end up crushing yeah. uh, more than they end up helping. Yeah, I feel like any relationship that begins with unrealistic expectations and is led by that is is like almost bound to, to fall to its demise. Like there's just no realism in it. There's no grace in it. There's no almost, um, you're almost believing in a facade. You're almost believing in a hope of something instead of what's actually in front of you. Um, so definitely unrealistic expectations is something that we've had to check at the door over and over again. And we've had to communicate, like we've had to talk like time and time again, like what are your needs, what are your expectations of me as a husband, as a wife, um, in marriage, as a partner in life. We've had to have the conversation over and over again to ensure that we're all on the same page. So I would definitely retweet and agree with that. Can I say one more thing mm -hmm. off that? I'm going to just jump into my second one real quick if Go that's for okay. It. Go for it. Um, over communicate. Mm -hmm. like, that's one thing I wish I would have known yeah. going into marriage is to over communicate. Mm -hmm. I think I thought I was a great communicator. I thought I got details out fairly well, but no, nah, I, I did not know how much it took for her to feel honored, for her to feel loved, um, and for her to just feel in the loop about things. Yeah. Um, I didn't realize how much communication that took. Mm -hmm. So for me, what's natural to communicate that I might have gotten uh, is just not what she needs. Mm -hmm. So I've learned to over communicate. That's one thing um, I would for sure uh, suggest to anybody. Yeah. Mm -hmm. One thing that I wish I knew before getting married that I now know being married is that marriage is not all the Instagram cute pictures and you know this whole facade of what marriage looks like. I think that I came into marriage thinking that's what it was. Um, only for me to actually be in marriage and to realize like oh my gosh like this takes 
work. Like this takes intentionality, this takes sacrifice, this takes devotion, this takes unconditional forgiveness and love. There are so many things that you don't get to notice behind the scenes as a spectator until you're actually in the game yourself. And I think for me that blew me off my feet. Um, I'll talk more about you know certain parts and aspects of that that I didn't realize. Um, I was going to realize in marriage, but I would say for me, for sure, like just knowing that um, before I got married, you know, it's easy to think that marriage is just this cute little thing that people do, but like, no ma'am, no sir, like it really does take work. And of course it's fun, we love each other so much, we're best friends, literally, but like there's so much that just goes into keeping a marriage healthy and functioning and whole and safe and holy and all types of things. So that would be my first one. Um, I think, I mean, I get to one up you now because you went twice, right? <laughs> Okay, I guess I'm going again. Man, let's talk, let's go a little deeper. Let's go a little deeper. I know we're like, how deep are they going? But like, let's just go a little deeper. And I mean, I would just throw out, you know, one of the more deeper, I guess, intimate parts of marriage, of course, is sex, you know? And we did wait until marriage to have sex. And I would just say that for couples who are waiting until marriage and just kind of curious, like, oh my gosh, like, what is it gonna be like? How is it gonna happen? Is it gonna be like in the movies or whatever? And I don't know what your story is gonna be, but just from my perspective, um, it really is a beautiful moment because of course it is that covenant, you know, bond, um, wrapped up, laced up, you know, the night of your wedding. Um, or whatever, but I think for the most part, it is a learning experience. It is a learning curve of, okay, I have to now start from this place to learn my partner, their needs, their desires, what they like, what they don't like, and I have to also be able to communicate my needs um, during like sexual, sexual intimacy or what I'm wanting from that or from him. But communication is so important, and I've learned that over time, like, it gets more and more amazing, you know? Um, sure, it may not have been like the fireworks and all kinds of crazy stuff the first night because we were just figuring this out. But, best believe that we be out here. You know what I'm saying? We be making it pop or whatever, okay? <laughs> no, but now it's amazing, right? Because we've grown and we've learned each other. And I think in one of my past videos, I talked about reasons to wait, you know, to have sex until, you know, um, you're married. And I talked about like the, the beauty and growing and learning your partner um, in sexual intimacy and in all capacities of intimacy, emotional intimacy um, and mental intimacy and different things like that. So it was definitely a learning curve. Um, you know, I would say for the first year of marriage, sex still kind of hurt a little bit. I still felt pain because I'm like, I'm not used to this like happening, like what? So um, there is, you know, some differences, but um, rest assured, I feel like, you know, that stuff just kind of, you grow through that, you know, you learn through that and you end up on the other side to share kind of what your experience was. So that's one thing I did not realize that was going to happen before I got married that I did realize now that I, you know, am married. I just want to add on that. Mm -hmm. When you talk about, um, you know, waiting till marriage, are the benefits of that just for women or are they for men too? I think they're for on both they're, sides. They're definitely, sorry, I'm gonna answer the question. Mm -hmm. They are for men as well. And I need, like if you're a man watching this video, uh, I need you to understand that it's not just for women mm -hmm. to, to wait and to preserve the gift of sex before marriage. Yeah. Um, and actually men should be leading out in that and taking the responsibility of, of stewarding that gift. Mm -hmm. If you're in a relationship with someone, or even if you're out here just going willy-nilly with your pickle dilly. Oh gosh. <laughs> like, you need to like really just sit and reflect on the gift of sex because it is a good, great, amazing thing. Yeah. But there is a reason why God has called it to be fully expressed in covenant mm -hmm. because otherwise it, it really does cause a lot of pain and yeah. emotional baggage mm -hmm. and damage spiritually yeah. and not just for women for men too even though you may not realize it or feel mm -hmm. it immediately it is um right. chipping away at you yeah yeah no that's good um i feel like you know something that i didn't realize before i got married to you that i now realize is how much you know learned behaviors and um, toxic patterns or um, just things you've seen in your home, outside of your home and other relationships, how that can impact you in marriage. 
So, you know, you feel like, oh, when you get married, like when that ring is on like, the altar, you say, I do, like things just fall off of you. Like, praise God, that's the case. But, you know, you believe that those learned behaviors are in the past. Those learned behaviors are all, you know, behind the closed door. They're trapped, they're locked away. But what I found was that, you know, um, just coming from a background of mental health and just the aspect of trauma, experiencing trauma, seeing trauma, living in trauma, that stuff, man, bleeds out into safe, you know, relationships that are supposed to be intimate or close knit, especially one like marriage. Like we, y'all like blue, you know, not literally like blue, but we are in each other's spaces for most of the day, for most of our lives right now. So um, you're bound to bleed out onto the person you're with if you're not willing and ready to confront those learned behaviors, those toxic behaviors, and maybe even the trauma that you face as a child or as an adult. So I did not realize how much counseling I would need and therapy and I'm actually a therapist. I didn't realize how much I was going to need, how much healing I was going to need from God, how many prayers I was going to need and continue to need, how much mentorship I currently need and still, you know, have. Um, so it's just amazing to realize, like, you really think you have this until you get there and you're like, oh, like, no. You know, taking a, a good assessment of your childhood and things that you've been through and things that have happened or just what you've seen in your life. Have you been in all toxic relationships? And if so, how are you going to break the trajectory or the pattern or the curse, however, of not letting that continue down into your own marriage and into your children's children's children children's lives, right? Because you want to be a generational curse breaker, not a one that prolongs it or passes it down. We are only passing down blessings over here, okay? So um, it's just like you have a part to play. You really do. Individually, you have a part to play. Your partner can't hold the responsibility of needing to fix you and vice versa. You have a part to play in this and that's your mandate to, to play that part. Yeah, that's good. First one. Wife you preaching. I mean, <laughs> that's that's really that's really so true. And I just realized too, even even things in my own family, that I thought I could passively mm -hmm. bypass mm -hmm. like things that I thought like okay I, I just know yeah. not to do that mm -hmm. now when you're breaking generational patterns right. it is active it yeah. is not passive by any means mm -hmm. like it takes a lot of time and tears and prayer yeah. and and just really fighting for it and um, and only God can do it truly mm -hmm. But it does take a, a lot on our part of just fighting for those chains to be broken that maybe we saw in our, in our right. parents, our grandparents, you know, our great grandparents. Mm -hmm. Like these things do pass down, and if they're not actively brought out, I, at least I've seen in my own life. Mm -hmm. I can speak for me. I can speak for for the ways yeah. I've seen Crystal fight mm -hmm. um, for freedom. Right. Uh, from the fight. Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh. I heard someone say once that some of the sweetest things in life come from you know the greatest pain and the biggest joy all in one right whereby the birth of someone is like so much joy and then the death of them is so much sorrow and i feel like marriage is one of those things where it's like man the same place that could give me so much joy can also give me so much pain and sadness and i feel like there has to be that understanding and a shift of you know i have to fight for joy in my marriage i have to fight for freedom i have to fight for hope and that we will make it because if you don't, yes, it will flip the coin and become one of your saddest places of, you know, pain. So, yeah. 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 Do you have anything else you'd like to throw out there to just wrap it up? To wrap it up? Uh, wrap it up if you're not planning to have a baby. I, I, I did have one. I'm trying to remember what it was. But I would say, really, I've learned and I wish I had learned earlier to adjust to the pace of my life. Mm -hmm. Like you can't come into marriage at the pace you're going as a single man. Yeah. That could be spiritually, that could be like what you're doing in your career. You cannot expect to just keep going at the very same pace and not have to adjust when mm -hmm. you're bringing a whole nother different right. person and you're becoming one with them. Yeah. And I just wish that I, I had a better understanding of that and that I knew how to slow down when she, when, when, when she needs to slow down. And I knew how to yeah. speed up when, when it's time to speed up and not just go on based what I intuitively mm -hmm. know as a single person. I wish I knew to like earlier to relearn how to change the pace yeah. with 
with the spouse, with yeah. my wife, yeah. my mind, one, my flesh, my flesh and bone and my bones. Yeah. 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 So I think a lot of it is just really just staying on the same pace, you know, like making sure that you guys are going like at the same pace, which is true for me too, because I'm a very sporadic, like, oh my gosh, I have this vision, let's do it. And he's just like, what? So I'm like, oh my gosh, why aren't you getting this? Like, this is a good vision, you know? So, but I'm like, like, today. <laughs> <laughs> like this video is this video. It's not sporadic. I, it's not, we planned this, baby. But it's sporadic in, I guess, the, the day of the events that we're going to do today. Like, I was like, are we going to do it today or tomorrow? But nonetheless, I've just learned that communication, over communication, and just like, grace and patience so that's basically what i would say is our personal experience and response with things we wish we knew before we got married um of course you know this is not the exhaustive list of things we wish we knew there are definitely more but for the sake of this video and not making it an hour long we're gonna wrap it up and go ahead and let you guys digest what we've just said but um we'd love to know your experiences if you're married or you're single and dating or whatever like where are you coming from what are your thoughts on this what are your thoughts on what's been said and what are your thoughts on just reflecting on your life and looking at where you are and what you expect marriage to be so um we'd love to hear your thoughts and as always feel free to follow me on instagram follow him on instagram i will link all that stuff below make sure you like this video if you enjoyed it and subscribe for more any last words for me babe subscribe to her channel right Click the now, button, y'all. Really it's free. It's free. Red with the white word. Just click, just click it. it. Just click it and hit the bell. Hit the bell hit because the bell. get notified, right? Right? Well, y'all, it's been great talking to y'all. We'll see you guys next time. Bye. Good video.